Founded in 1988, Antiens is an American pretzel franchise brand. Pretzels, condiments, and drinks are all available at Antiens. For those who want to bake their own pretzels at home, they now sell a pretzels and more homemade baking mix. The chain's more than 1,200 stores can be found in malls, outlet malls, airports, railway stations, travel plazas, amusement parks, military facilities, and a wide variety of non-traditional retail places. How an F. Beeler built Auntie Anne's to success? Let's hear the story. Ann Beeler was born on January 16, 1949, in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. She was one of eight children in an old order Amish family. Gap, Pennsylvania, where she grew up, had only 2,000 people. When she was three, her parents decided to join the Amish Mennonite Church. This meant that the family still did many Amish things, like farm and use a horse and buggy. Still, they could use some modern things, like electricity, in limited ways. Beeler started a business when she was 12 and made pies and cakes for her family to sell. This was around 1961. After three years, she quit school to work at a truck stop and gave her parents the money she made. Many Amish girls did this because their parents didn't like the outside influences of high school. In 1968, Anne, who was 19, married Jonas Beeler, who was 21 and had also learned to bake as a child. After that, they worked together to build churches in Pennsylvania and Texas for a few years. Beeler had her first child when she was 22. Around the same time, she left the Amish Mennonite Church because she thought it was too strict. She said that she kept the faith and morals she was taught as a child. And was also a waitress and raised her two daughters, Lawana and Lavelle, at home. In 1987, the Beelers moved back to Pennsylvania. Jonas, who worked as an auto mechanic, wanted to open a marriage and family counseling center for the Amish in Lancaster County, who didn't like getting help from people outside their community and got a $200 a week part-time job running a concession stand at a farmer's market two hours away in Maryland. She did this to help raise money for this project. There is where she started making pretzels. Within a year, she rented a 12 by 20 foot pretzel stand for $250 a month in Downingtown, Chester County, Pennsylvania. She got $6,000 from her in-laws to buy an oven, a mixer, and a fridge for the stall. When it opened in February 1988, Beeler, who had 30 nieces and nephews, gave it the name Auntie Anne's. Pizza, stromboli, ice cream, and hand-rolled pretzels were the first things on the menu. Based on a friend's recipe, the first pretzels did not sell very well. In fact, she only made $350 every weekend, which was just enough to stay afloat. Because of a mistake with the delivery of supplies, the pretzels were tested for two months. And Beeler made a softer, sweeter winner with a few extra ingredients that her husband Jonas suggested. Within a few months, she sold four times as many pretzels, and soon that was all she sold at her booth. She rolled them in front of her customers as an entertaining show. Beeler opened a second stand in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, in July 1988. He did this after he got another $5,000 in funding. She set up a franchise in 1989 based on a recipe that worked well. She let her brother, Jake Smucker, a construction manager, get the first franchise. He opened a store in Middletown, Pennsylvania. In November of 1989, the Beelers went to their first shopping mall. Seven of their store had been at farmers markets and had never run a business before and only went to school through the ninth grade, but after a year, she had eight standalone stores and her first Auntie Anne's soft pretzel store in a mall. The only advertising the business had was the great things people said about it. In the beginning, the business was very much run by the family, which hasn't changed. Auntie Anne had a sister who made handmade pretzel mix. She did not give licensees the recipe. It was brought by another brother. Anne's two daughters also helped build the shops with her husband and brother-in-law. Sandy Chandler was another early franchisee. She went to Ballard's church. So was Ben Lapp, who put $3,000 into a store in the Pennsylvania town of Intercourse. In the beginning, things were pretty loose. 
Beeler says that her friends insisted on running their own stores, so she just asked for a cut of their monthly sales to let them use her name and recipe. There was also a transfer of a franchise fee of between $2,500 and $5,000. Beeler sold 10 franchises in the first year, but it was hard for the family to keep the openings on time. In 1990, the system made $1 million. Carl Smucker, Valor's younger brother, he had seven siblings, joined the company in August 1990 and suggested that new franchises be put on hold for six months. He felt he couldn't handle everything, so he told his sister to talk to Francorp, an Olympia Fields, Illinois-based franchising consultancy. Soon, Francorp consultant David Hood helped her make a 100-page contract and a rules manual. To protect the brand's integrity, the new agreement forbids sales to supermarkets. The franchise fee was also doubled, from $5,000 to $15,000. Hood started working there in 1991 as the director of franchising. Eventually, he became the company's president. The new stores always had soft, hand-rolled pretzels like the first one. There were eight stores by the end of 1989. The following year, 42 more stores opened, most in Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. By the end of 1991, there would be 90 stores. This long run of success was noticed. In 1992 and 1994, Beeler was named Entrepreneur of the Year by Inc. Magazine. The chain then had 279 stores, all but 17 franchised. $8 million in sales brought in $350,000. The Family Information Center in Lancaster County, Jonas Baller's idea for a free counseling center, opened in 1992. But the giving did not stop there. Later, Beeler got involved with the Angela Foundation, named after a 19-month-old daughter who died. In 1994, Auntie Anst donated $150,000 to charities. This was a lot of money, which made loan officers angry. On the other hand, friends told the Beelers about an angel who was a chicken farmer who gave them a loan of $1 million. Auntie Anne did let herself have a few treats, though. She bought herself a white Cadillac Eldorado that cost $36,000. She and her husband also rode motorcycles across the country. Along the way, they stopped at family-owned stores. In the middle of the 1990s, Auntie Anne slowly spread through the malls of America. At the end of 1995, the chain had 344 stores, much bigger than competitors like Pretzel Time and Gretel's Pretzels. Each franchise made an average of $300,000 a year, and the whole system made more than $100 million. Auntie Anne's opened its first international store in Jakarta, Indonesia, where most people had never even heard of pretzels. The smell of freshly baked pretzels was a strong calling card for the company, giving away free samples. In one case, it sent a pretzel cart through a mall in Detroit, giving them out. Auntie Anne stores brochures about nutrition, locations, and the company's history. At the end of 1996, there were 408 stores in the chain. It kept talking about its Pennsylvania Dutch roots. It had a lot of Amish owners, many of whom were related, even though some people thought they weren't very good at running a business. In the book Restaurant Business, as Beeler said, what I'd done is very un-Amish. Congress made an exception, so Amish franchisees didn't have to pay social security taxes for their Amish workers. Also, they didn't have to pay into the state fund for workers' compensation. Like bagels, pretzels were starting to become famous as a low-fat alternative to other mall snacks like pizza. Auntie Anne's had 558 stores in 1998, but only 10 of the 6,000 franchise applications it received that year were accepted. The business gets 400 inquiries every month. Even though it was successful, it stayed a family business. 30 of Anne Baller's relatives worked for the company, and one of her brothers, Sam Beeler, was the COO. In total, it had 100 people working at the main office and 35 in regional offices. The company kept opening stores in malls, where sales continued to be good. By 2000, Auntie Anne's had almost 600 locations worldwide. 
They open seven new ones every month at between $150,000 and $250,000 for each franchisee. The company has stores in Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Malaysia. There were also plans to open stores in Hong Kong and Venezuela. In 2000, the company planned to open up to 20 stores in the East. In March 2000, the Pretzel Japan Corporation opened its first store in Japan. It was in the New Mosaic Mall in Yokohama. The restaurants have significantly changed foreign markets to fit in with local tastes. For example, they have changed their recipes to be halal in Malaysia. In October 2006, it was announced that Auntie Anne's would move its corporate headquarters from Gap, Pennsylvania, to downtown Lancaster. In November 2010, Auntie Anne's was bought by Atlanta-based franchiser Focus Brands. Focus Brands is a portfolio company of private equity firm Roark Capital.